Google's AI overview is quietly stealing 30%, even more, of traffic away from traditional number one search rankings, and a lot of SEO experts aren't talking about what this means for local business. So here's what most people don't realize. You don't need to be on page one anymore to win. So I've been testing this strategy across multiple clients' websites inside my seven-figure SEO agency, and the results have been consistently impressive. In fact, I've personally used this exact method on 17 different client websites in the past two months, and 14 of them are now featured in Google's AI overview. In one case, we saw traffic double in under two weeks for a client who was already stuck on page two. And yes, clicks from the AI overview are shown in the Google Search Console data. So let me show you what that looked like. And honestly, here's what really has me concerned for local businesses. Google is already testing AI overview integration with the local maps results. The writing honestly is on the wall. Soon, local searches might feature AI generated summaries and could bypass traditional map pack results entirely. So the method I'm going to show you will let you know exactly how to be featured in the AI overview so you can prepare your local websites for what's coming. But first, I discovered something that most SEO experts are completely missing about Google in 2025. This strategy is so powerful that even small local businesses are seeing huge results. And I'm going to show you exactly how to copy it for your own sites or clients. Plus, I'm going to break down a real world example where we got an information content client featured in just 24 hours, even though they weren't ranking in the top 10. After implementing this strategy, they saw a 67% traffic increase within the first week of being featured. But how do you actually do it? Well, most SEO experts are playing by the old rules, trying to win by simply ranking higher. But that's not how Google works anymore. And I'm going to use a simple bookshelf to make this crystal clear. So a mant in this bookshelf represents Google search results. Now, traditionally, users would scan through these books in order, usually focusing on the first three, even though there are dozens and dozens of other books here. Now, if you've been grinding to move from position number 11 to position number nine, that is getting on the first page, struggling with every backlink and every content update, you can stop. With this method, I've had clients on page two get more traffic than competitors who are in the third position. So here's why. Google's AI overview works completely differently than just showing you books. It's going to read through all the books on the shelf, regardless of position. Then, instead of sending users to the bookshelf, it's going to write a new book excerpt based on the most helpful books it was able to find. It will then tell the user which three books it relied on the most to write its new excerpt. It might be this one up here, it might be this one here, and finally, let's go with this third one here. Now, the fascinating part, this book here might have the best explanation of a very specific topic. So Google might feature it very prominently, even though it's not in the first position or even in the top 10 position. So users will now get their information directly from excerpts of these three books without ever even looking at the full bookshelf. The books featured here will get all the attention and all the traffic. So our goal here is to get your website featured as one of these three, regardless of where your book sits on the shelf. And I'm about to show you exactly how to do that. All right. Time to go back to the studio. But that's just the beginning. What I discovered next will completely change how you think about local SEO. Now, this is especially powerful for local businesses. While most local SEO, rightly so, focuses on map pack rankings and reviews, being featured as an authoritative source in AI overviews can position a local business as the trusted expert in their area. Now, one plumber that we work with in a Phoenix suburb was getting 15 calls a month from their website. After after implementing this AI overview strategy without changing anything else, they jumped to 33 calls in the next month after. So you might think this only works for certain industries, but here's what shocked me. I tested this across plumbers, dentists, personal injury lawyers, even specialized services like dental practice brokers. And the one I'll show you today, which is a local summer camp directory website. When someone searches best plumbing repair methods, appearing as Google's chosen source instantly builds credibility that converts to calls and leads. 
feed. But how do you actually get featured? The secret lies in a two prompt system that most people have never heard of. And I'm going to show you exactly what those prompts are in just a moment. But first, let me save you from the biggest mistake that I see people make. They think this is all about keyword density or perfect on-page SEO. And honestly, that's what I thought too. But after analyzing over 500 AI overviews across different industries, honestly, I found something much more predictable. The single most important factor in being cited at an AI overview wasn't what everyone thinks. It turns out Google looks for a specific type of keywords that show user intent. So here's the exact process I used to get a directory of local summer camps featured as a source on the AI overview. So the first step is identifying which of your keywords that you're already ranking for are most likely to trigger an AI overview. But which keywords should you focus on? A lot of people are going to guess we want high volume keywords or existing top five rankings. But actually, there's a much more systematic way to find these opportunities. And honestly, it starts with the data you already have. So here we are in the Google Search Console. And what I'm going to do is export the search results for performance. I'll hit export and I want the CSV file. So that's going to download it. And then I'll grab the queries CSV file. That's the one we're going to run this analysis on. So this is inside my school community. And let me go ahead and grab the prompt that we're going to use. It is this one here. This will be published by the time this YouTube video goes live. Right now it's still in draft, but AI overview now. So the first step, now you can pause the screen here, grab this and use it. Or if you join the school community, you'll be able to have access to this. So I'm going to copy this whole prompt all the way down here. And I'm going to give this to Claude along with the CSV file. So here's the exact same prompt that I gave it. I gave it the queries.csv and that prompt. Now you notice I'm using the Opus 4 model for Claude. The Opus model is better at data analysis than the Sonnet model. You can also use ChatGPT if that's the one you prefer. I just like using Claude. Once we give it the prompt and have it start running, we can see it took quite some time to do this analysis. And that's why I'm not doing this on camera. I already ran this analysis and I'm just showing you the results. I had to say continue a few times. Here's the report that it generated. Let me just move this over so we can see this report. So it's giving the top 20 in the first table here. I'm going to focus on this first one, what to put in a fanny pack. But you can see beyond that, there's a lot of other possibilities that we have to look at. So this prompt finds every keyword where you're already close to the first page of Google. We don't want to be in position 80, and but it specifically looks for question keywords. The one that start with how or why or include words like cost. Those types of keywords are the most likely ones to trigger an AI overview. This prompt then calculates what we call an opportunity score, which is your impressions divided by your position. This tells us which keywords had the highest potential impact if we can get them featured in the AI overview. And here's where most people waste time. They try to optimize their best performing pages first when they should be targeting their highest opportunity score pages. So let me show you what this search looked like before we did anything. Now we can already see here the AI overview appearing for this search term, which of course confirms that this is a solid opportunity to optimize this page for. But that's not the crazy part. What happens next is where the real magic begins. So once you've identified your target keyword, you need to know exactly what to change on your page so that you are featured in the AI overview. And this is where a lot of SEO experts will get it completely wrong. We're going to use a second prompt that will rewrite and technically enhance this URL targeting the AI overview. But first, there's one thing that you absolutely must do or this just won't work. You need to take the current AI overview text that Google is showing and copy it. This will help us understand exactly what Google's AI thinks is most important for this query. And next, we're also going to copy the current content from the page that we want to optimize. And when you run this through the second prompt, it's going to create something that I haven't seen other SEOs talk about. One, a gap analysis showing what's missing from your content compared to the AI overview. Two, an updated answer block structured perfectly for the AI overview to grab it. Three, JSON-LD schema market that helps Google understand your content even better, especially its AI overview. And fourth, technical tweaks to title tags and internal links to improve the page overall. So let me show you what it looks like to run that prompt. All right, so here I am again, back in my school community, and I'm gonna come down and grab the prompt here. And now I'm looking for the step two prompt, which is right here. Now I've already filled this in for the what to put in a fanny pack. So if you're using this prompt yourself, you're clearly going to need to update a couple of things. So we have what to put in a fanny pack, and then I've copied in the AI overview text here. I've given it the target 
URL that we're trying, and I've given it all the content on that target URL. So skip over all this. And now we finally start going through what the deliverables are, what we want the AI to actually do for us. So we want this gap analysis, we want answer blocks, we want the structured data, and we want some technical tweaks. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy this entire prompt. Now here I'm going to use the sonnet model. The sonnet model is better for copywriting. I said this before, and this is largely a copywriting exercise. Okay, so the AI has finished running. So let me show you what it did. It gave us an overall gap analysis of what's missing in the page versus the AI overview. It rewrote the content on the page so we can put this new content on there. It gave us JSON LD schema markup that we can add to the page to make it easier for Google and Google's AI and frankly other AIs like ChatGPT to be able to understand what this page is and what it's about and it gave us a document full of improved technical areas for this same page all of which we asked for it's also given us a summary of everything that it provided so I took all of those documents gave them to my developer and asked him implement these changes so basically what he ended up doing he restructured the content so that it matched what Google was actually looking for added the schema markup to the page did a variety of these other technical improvements, including adding more internal links. And finally, we requested a recrawl in the search console. We could just wait for Google to crawl it on its own. Uh, I'm not patient enough for that, so we requested it. Finally, we added a quality backlink using icecreamtruck.shop. That's my site, I own it for links and other things. Within 24 hours of doing all of that, the page was featured in the AI overview and traffic spiked. Let me show you. So if I come to Google, I'm just gonna type in our target keyword, what to put in a fanny pack. And if I I hit show more, here is the client that we optimized for, this Happy Camper website. So this is why I was so excited to share this methodology with you. There are a lot of clients I have that are paying over $1,000 a month just for this service alone. And once you set up these two prompts, we use a cloud project for the most part, you can deliver these results in like 30 minutes, especially if you already have a developer. And even better, clients that you do this for stay clients for longer because they can literally see their business showing up as a trusted chosen authority by Google. And for local businesses, honestly, this strategy works even better. Local business sites we optimize see not only an increased traffic, but also an increase of conversions. Being featured as Google's chosen source establishes you as a local authority, which is particularly powerful in competitive local markets and in high trust type businesses. But before you rush off to implement this, let me save you from the three biggest mistakes that I've seen people make when trying to optimize for an AI overview. Okay, the first mistake, not structuring content properly for the AI overview. Now, when I say that, most people are just going to create long paragraphs of information because that's what AI outputs. But Google, especially Google's AI, really loves to see clear, direct answers to questions with supporting details. Use H2 tags for questions and concise paragraphs with bullet points for clear answers, right at a fourth or fifth grade level, and often repeat the question in the answer so that AI's algorithm, AI's math, knows what question you're answering. Mistake number two, missing schema markup opportunities. Schema is like labels on moving boxes. If you were moving, you wouldn't need to label all the boxes, but man, would it be easier than rummaging through each pack box to figure out what it is and what room it should go in when you're ready to unpack. Google definitely uses schema to better understand your content, yet almost 80% of the websites, local websites I analyze don't use schema at all. AI relies on schema even more than Google. Mistake number three, not using enough trust signals. You can't just state facts without backing them up. You should include specific numbers statistics and reviews where appropriate. Google wants to feature authoritative content, so make sure yours is the part by providing data points and references. So now you know how to get your clients featured as trusted sources inside Google's AI overview. But if you just stop there, frankly, you're going to leave money on the table. Most SEO professionals miss entirely. And I'm going to break down the exact process in this video. Click the video on the screen now, and I'll walk you through the full Google Maps companion strategy that we use to dominate both AI overview and the map pack to turn rankings into real revenue for our clients.